Welcome to the First 40 with the squad. It's Black Thor and Puma. I'm going to go to hot takes, man. Your first hot take, bro. You know something I noticed, man, um, that's going on? And I think the, Cow the Dallas Cowboys are leading this, man. There's a correction coming to NFL first, and it's going to go over to other sports because they tend to follow, NBA tend to follow everything NFL do. There's going to be a correction based on what these players are making, man. I think these owners, if you look at that Prescott, where the Cowboys are basically saying, we're not paying. Hey, but like, they should be, <clears throat> we're not paying. You. We're just not going to pay that type of money. Whether you go out there and play someone else, we'll put a third stringer in, which the cat they got from San Francisco. Right. They can pay you that. Because they, they're looking at what they offer you and what you get delivered. Look around the league. Look at the league in, in I'll say, the Chargers, what they paid that quarterback. Has he earned that money yet? Right. No. Not for nothing. I mean, I love him. Lamar Jackson got a new, new contract. What happened? Here's a cat that makes less than all of them. How many Super Bowls has one? Right. So just want to get your opinion on that. You know what? When, when these, these uh, salaries start getting out of control, I kind of figured that this was going to happen. It's like the owners are going to just let it get out of control to the point where they're going to go, you know what? We need to tighten up the reins a little bit and bring this back to – um, you know, some salaries that we can pay. Because when Mahomes got his contract, I'm like, whoa, everybody else is going to want, you know, give me a dollar or a thousand dollars over what he makes. And they're not as accomplished as him, but they're, they're the star quarterback. And that's that's the, the rate in which quarterbacks are going. So I I thought when, um, if, when quarterbacks, okay, they're going to justify that. But when other different positions are going to start asking for more money, now the owner's going to say, you know what, this is getting a little bit out of control. Let's kind of regulate this a, a little bit and, and pull back a little bit because we're not going to be able to pay that. And I think a lot of it comes from the TV contracts that, you know, players and agents are seeing the TV contracts, you know, you know, blowing up. And now they want more money because they're like, OK, if your team is going to be playing, um, you deserve part of that money. But I kind of saw this happening that they weren't going to let it go that far and they're going to have to restructure some of these contracts because a lot of these teams aren't going to be able to afford to, to pay top players to play on their team. Yeah, man, if you look at, you know, a lot of the quarterbacks that have won in the last 10 years, they weren't knocking down big salaries yeah. for quarterbacks, what quarterbacks are making. So you're paying these quarterbacks these enormous salaries and they're not delivering anything. Now, if you just want to say you have yourself a franchise quarterback, you're happy with that. But I think a correction is coming. And I believe the Dallas Cowboys is leading the chair, man. I think after this happened, everybody act like Prescott going to walk onto the open market and everybody going to throw money. I don't see it. No. I just don't see it. You would think, I mean, I, it's amazing how people just project like he's going to walk out there and there's going to be millions. I don't see it. And I think realistically, the, the, the contract that really started was Deshaun Watson. Yeah, that's a contract that really kind of just said, wait a minute, hold it. So, yeah, man, I think you're going to start to see a correction because it's happening with the running backs. I think it's time for the quarterbacks now to see to feel the same pain. And then you got the, the college guys coming in and they're going to be wanting more money. <laughs> it's just not yeah. going to be enough to go around. It's just I mean, look at but if you look at the two, man, you make a good point because this year the draft was loaded with good young quarterbacks. Mm hmm. Look what look what what's the name did Houston quarterback on a rookie salary rookie salary look what he did compared to anyone else in the league you got to be kidding me look at love what love did for um Green Bay Packers he's not making that type you know what I mean so they start looking around like mm -mm. I'd rather take a young and experienced quarterback pay them you know cheaper and get the same results a young quarterback went into the Cowboys backyard and whooped their butt in the playoffs yeah and I think I think that's when Jerry Jones eyes open up like wait a minute. We're doing this wrong. Yeah. We're doing this wrong. Yeah. yeah. My hype take, man, and we, we kind of talk about it uh, and, and text each other about this. Uh, JJ Reddick, don't know, doesn't have any coaching experience. He's on TV kind of talking a, a, a big game. It looks like he's going to be the next LA Lakers coach. Your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you. we know why. We know why. He has a podcast now with, you know, the guy that, Claim he's a goat, whatever, which I never believe and never thought he was. But, you know, he has influence, not JJ Reddick, but the man that is bringing him in. And the Lakers are doing anything. I, I'm convinced. And I, I read something yesterday. Well, it was it was in the LA Times, if I'm not mistaken. A lot, they allow a lot of 
their readers to send in, you know, letters about the Lakers. And trust me, that cat's not well loved anymore. Man. They're ready for him to go. They're ready for him to go. They really want her, the owner, Jimmy Buss, to sell the team. Wow. Because they're tired of basically, yeah, they're tired of her basically in so many words playing to the playing to the basically the political fanfare and excitement and not doing anything. Think about it. You've been there for six years. What happened? What has happened? You brought in players. You brought in Westbrook. You brought in this. They're listening to him. And you know where his son is going to be? Guess where his son is going to be? And they're saying if his son comes here, they're not watching. They're not watching. I go into the game because it's not it's not a well-run organization. That's not what her father would have done. So it's crazy when you think about it. I mean, they fired a man that basically had you almost in the finals last year. Basically, he can't go out there and make three points. I mean, take a, you know, you got guys missing three pointers, not playing defense, looking around, basically not boxing out. He's supposed to do that. So it's amazing, but it's what it is, man. So yeah, he's he's the he's their hot button right now. Going to come in. I'm happy that he does. But guess what? That team will win like maybe 30 games next year. Him and Anthony Davis gonna claim an injury and act like it's not their fault. Watch what happens. So good. Please hire. I'm waiting for the press conference. Please hire. Yeah, I, this is a, a really, really bad. You, you think the Lakers can't get any worse with with some of the moves that they're making? I don't know who advised them to get JJ Reddick. JJ Reddick is gonna get exposed because I don't think he's that smart to be a NBA coach. He doesn't have the experience. Uh, it, it just, I, I'm just blown away by. You know, you can get in a booth somewhere and then all of a sudden you can find yourself in a coach coaching job. And he just over jumped all these guys that have been in the G League and and have paid their dues. And he gets gets the spot. Talk about privilege. But LeBron has been the record since LeBron's been there is one twenty three and one twenty three five hundred. He has gone through six coaches. There was a story uh, that Pat Riley um, years ago. LeBron wanted Mike Sposa to be fired. And Pat Riley was like, oh, no, he's staying here. <laughs> you may yeah. be going, but he's staying here. And he, I think he saw the pattern of what LeBron was doing with all those coaches he got fired or he wasn't happy with. And he's like, you're not ruining this organization because, you know, you're, you're unhappy or you're trying to be this bad apple kind of influencing the rest of the team to that the, it's the coach's fault. It's your fault. It's you take accountability for what you're doing and what you're not doing. And Pat Riley, I got to give him credit. He was smart enough to kind of see it and say, hey, if you want to go back to Cleveland or whatever, have at it. That's what I think the Lakers should do, saying, listen, if you're not happy here, you know, you're 39 years old. Ain't too much juice in that orange anymore. So if you want to go somewhere, because you're not, you're not getting another championship. You're going to chase another championship. You're going to try to hook yourself up to a team that can possibly go to a championship. But if you're the Lakers, LeBron has brought you in six years a bubble tournament um, when I call it a bubble tournament um, in 2020, a in-season tournament y'all won this year. <laughs> y'all happy about and getting ready to put a banner up. And he's only 500 in wins, 123, 123. The GOAT, I don't think so. Let's end that conversation right now. But he's not bringing you anything. He's not bringing you. They, they're keeping the, the play in just for you, you and the Golden State Warriors. And it's not yeah. working out. I'm going to say this for him. And this is what really <clears throat> irks me about this too, man. You may not hear this anywhere else. But I look at, I know we talk about NFL head coaches can't black men can't get an NFL head coaching job. And I've said it for the years that when the black players step up, it will happen. Think about this this year in the NBA. You had a black coach doing well in Milwaukee, and black men undermined him to get him out. Undermined him. You have dumbass Anthony Davis. I'm gonna call him a dumbass. Seriously, at a game when 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 Jokic was basically making you. Lick his jock strap in the fourth quarter. You stand in a sitting in a press conference and literally said, We didn't know what we were doing out there. Seriously? You turn around to a black man, basically point your finger for your ineptness. Now, and getting paid millions, by the way. Now you're gonna welcome in this white cat that knows nothing, nothing about coaching NBA franchise. You're gonna walk him and lick him up and down. Same thing with that. You know, that dumbass that calls himself the greatest. I'm going to say what it is. 
I don't care. I don't get it, boss. I just don't understand it. So my point is, I'm tired of us acting like we're trying to excel us, us, people that look like us. It's the general managers and coaches when the same dumbasses keep undermining them. It is what it is. You got him. Look at Milwaukee. You brought in Doc the same thing <clears throat> on television. That man was doing a hell of a job. Greek freak. You don't like him. He's not playing. You don't play defense. He's not. Right. Playing. You don't play defense. How can he go in defense when you don't play it? But that's the same thing I said about the NFL, where they're going to start to basically, there's going to be a correction. NBA soon shall follow. Because you can't tell me right now the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers ain't ready to punch his man through a wall. You gave up that whole team for, for Kawhi Leonard. You gave it up to bring him in there, to bring Paul George. That dumbass sitting in a press conference for you know it's a long year. It's not that bad. Are you kidding me? I would have stormed that damn press conference and threw him out of the chair. That cat's sitting on the sideline like he's ready to explode. I don't care how much money he got. You can't, you can't be happy the way you're spending it. The change is coming. They're a bunch of little diva brats, baby. I'm just, that's what they are. You get paid to put a basketball in a hoop. And when you can't do it, you whine like a little baby. <laughs> Yeah. Denver Nuggets lost the first game to Minnesota. Nobody complained. No one said, you know what? We got to go get better. We got to look at it. No, it's not the coach didn't have us in the right position. We didn't know what we was doing. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 we're going to segue right into the playoffs and the NBA. And you look at teams who, who really took their time to develop, like the Thunder. They're the number one seed. Like Minnesota. We used to, I used to really kind of uh, be hurting for Minnesota and, uh, you know, in towns because I'm like, they got the talent, but they, they just need, you know, to really kind of gel. You see those teams, um, Denver, not no big time superstar, but Joker is a superstar in my opinion, but you know, he does it, does it the right way. He's doing it the right way. And when I watched the thunder and how they develop these young players and they got emerging player with, with SGA, I mean, and then you got Minnesota with, with Edwards, I mean, these are prime time players and we're spending all our time or the networks are spending all that time with old dudes who ain't got it no more. They're done. They're done. You should be highlighting. You said it. I said it. I used to said it on the show. We should be highlighting these young superstars, but they haven't figured out how to highlight these, these young superstars. You go back right over the East. You got the Knicks with uh, Jalen Brunson. Just killing them, <laughs> killing them. You got Cleveland coming back from a 15 point deficit to win game seven. And you're still talking about the Lakers. You're still talking about Golden State. You're talking about folks that aren't even in the playoffs anymore. They get the, the lion's share of the media coverage. But when I look at these playoffs, man, um, this Timberwolves Nuggets you know, series is going to be a barn burner. They're going to be going at it. You got the Thunder Mavericks coming up. You got the Knicks and the Pacer, old rivalry coming up. That's going to be, uh, I'm expecting a fight in that one, to be honest with you. And then you got the Celtics and, and the Cavaliers. The Cavaliers, I think, got a big boost winning game seven. And you see their superstar saying, you know what? Uh, we ain't done yet. You know, we, we won game seven, but we ain't done it, done yet. I want to see how they go up against the Celtics and, and whether or not they can carry the momentum of winning that game seven and, and heading to uh, Boston. I was watching um, a couple of the games between the Cavaliers and the Magic. I said to myself, this young cat they got on the Magic, Larry, I might be saying his last name for so please forgive From me. From Duke, yeah, yeah. Yes. How would, we wouldn't know he exists if he was in the playoff. That cat been killing all year. Yeah. We wouldn't know he exists. We still, we, we still didn't know he exists until the, the dumbass team lost. It's amazing. And, and, and to me, you look at these teams that you talked about, those three teams are not in. They had to fight to get into the playoffs. Fight. Golden State didn't even make it. Why are we talking about them? Who cares? I don't understand it. So it's amazing. You're right. You have these young players that are dominating. When I say dominating, dominating. Then they want to basically take Edwards and basically he is, forget about being a face league. The man just want to play basketball. Stop trying to get ahead of everything. I'm trying to link up to this. It's not about being a face league. The man trying to play basketball with a championship. Whoever's in front of him, he says he's taking them down. I love to hear. When last time you heard that in the NBA? When the last time you heard that? He's not doing it dirty. He's doing it the right way. Everything is in front of me. And I was like, yes. we're going to put everybody on notice. Come on, man. 
you want to tune in and watch that, but it's amazing. Like you said, they spend the whole season. I said it last year when Denver won. They treated Denver like they didn't win the championship. Right, right. Like they like like Denver didn't do anything the whole season. Denver's playing. You got you got LA about fifty games to get on prime time for what? For what? I'm sorry, I just don't get it, man. But, but I, that's that mentality. And I'm gonna say this, man, is getting ready to get worse, and especially with NFL. The NFL, and if you've heard this or not, they get ready to do away the NFL Network. Kaput, go on. Good. They sliding that under ESPN. The worst thing they could have done. Think about that for a second. That's the worst thing. You're not going to hear no criticism of NFL coming from nowhere above ASPN. I don't care. You're not going to, man, they can do whatever they want now. ASPN is not going to say anything. Everything will be tap dance. Everything is great. You can punch your anybody, your, whatever you want to do, knock this one out, throw the ball in the stand like Pat Beverly did. No, don't even talk about that. I'm not even talking about it. Like it didn't even happen. That's what's getting ready to happen, bro. When it comes down to commentating, because like that's one thing I, I'm always a big fan of is Charles Barkley said this a little while ago. The problem with a lot of these commentators, they want to be liked by these players too yeah, much. They want to be friends. They're afraid to be objective. They're afraid to say what's in front of them and speak the truth. They want to be liked. I heard, I saw Mike Wilbon ripped into the Lakers for firing Darren Ham, and I stood up and gave him applause, man. Yeah. Time out, Red. Time out. You, you got to say what it is. Stop being friendly. Stop being politically correct. You get paid to do a job. I don't want watered down BS no more. I really don't. Give us some real strong sports media. Yeah, because uh, they want to be friends with all these folks. You know, they, they want to be, I can call them on the phone. Oh, he texts me. No, no. Just report what you see. I got more respect for you. You report what you see instead of just trying to be friends, getting the text numbers, hanging out with him. Oh, I'm not going to say anything bad. Pat Beverly should be out the league right now. He should be out the league right now. I mean, he, he doesn't give you much anyway, but he should be mm -hmm. out the league for, you know, he's acting like he's a superstar. He's acting like he's a real bona fide superstar. Now, when he was here in Chicago, he was playing high school. He, he was, he was, he was, he was the dude. He was the dude. He could score all that other stuff. But somewhere along the line, you know, I guess NBA teams are like, you know what? We don't really need your scoring. We need your tenacity on defense. And it's gotten to his head. He's been a, a you know, a real um, kind of like a bad apple for a long time, trying to cause fights, getting in people's faces. Um, I know he, him and LeBron had this thing going on. Him and CP3 had this thing going on. Where they, you know, he shoved CP3 in, in, in certain games. He should be out of the league because he really doesn't give you much. But um, to say, hey, if you don't watch my podcast, you can't interview me. Who, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> if you don't subscribe, who, who are you? Who are you? And to throw a ball in the stands like that. And I said this oh. to you, that mm -hmm. Minnesota Buck, I mean, the Milwaukee Bucks, when uh, Giannis was, you know, hot and, and bothered because he didn't get a, the game ball. I'm like, they are more concerned about getting game balls. They got that championship. They got fat, lazy. That's not their, their objective anymore. They're so worried about getting game balls and, and you know, getting my brother's sneaker deals and all this other stuff. They, they don't want a championship. You fired a coach that could have got you at least past the first round of the, of, of the playoffs, and you get Doc Rivers. As soon as they hired Doc Rivers, no offense to Doc Rivers, but I'm like, they don't want to win. They do not want to win. And I said last week, Doc Rivers is looking like his stomach is hurt because he knows. <laughs> he knows they're not going far. They're not going far. And the Greek freak sitting on the sideline looking dumb. Damon Lillard, like, I know he regrets going to Milwaukee now. He could have went somewhere else and really kind of, of got a chance to play. So I know he's sitting and he said the correct thing. Yeah, we gotta, you know, get it together and come back next year, come back stronger next year. Y'all were y'all had 30 games, y'all were in, in in first place, and you weren't happy. I think you're right. The NBA owners and these NBA teams are gonna get smart and say, you know what, we're not allowing these superstar players to kind of dictate who we should put on a team and um to be GMs and be coaches. And yeah. I think it'll probably start happening right after LeBron James uh, retires or he's out the league because they don't want to kind of upset that apple cart with LeBron James because, they, you know, everybody wants to be, you know, on the right side of history of, you know, making sure that he goes out, you know, in style. But uh, I think as soon as he leaves, it's going to be because it hasn't worked uh, in, in most cases. Um, you had the Brooklyn fiasco. You had the Clippers fiasco. 
the Clippers, if you sign Kawhi Leonard again or extend his contract, trade him now. Get he can't stay on the court. Paul George ain't gonna do it for you. And I don't know. I think uh, the Kardashians got the Westbrook. I, I don't know what happened to Westbrook. But you know, and then I told you last week when when Ice talked about you know can, should we buy and sell the Clippers? I'm like sell, sell, sell. Mongo Slade is back, and he act like and I keep telling folks he act like he can't play basketball when it comes to playoff time. And I wouldn't be surprised, man. I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the tape with some betting or something like that. I would not be surprised, bro. But I'm so glad that most of them are out the playoffs. We ain't got to worry about them. And I'm actually enjoying the NBA games with some new, fresh talent that's out Absolutely. there that's ready and hungry to win a championship. It ain't about yeah. stopping the profiling and getting a soundbite. They want to win. Yes. I, I got a, I got something, if you don't mind. It's another hot take I want to put out there, if you don't mind. And I want to get your opinion on this because um, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. They were um the quarterback that came from Chicago Bears with Pittsburgh Steelers, right? Mm -hmm. I can't think of his name right now from Ohio State. Yeah, I know, I, know yes. where you're going. I know where you're going. The Pittsburgh Steelers are considering having this young man do punt returns and kickballs. So my, you know, I'm looking at I'm, I'm being honest. I'm looking at Mike Tomlin like, what the f are you doing? Man? You know how many times we had to fight as black quarterbacks. To play nothing but just black, I mean, quarterback. quarterback. Yeah. And you want to take this young man and put him back to the return punts and kicks? Man, I'm telling you right now, bro. I, 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 I'll be honest. I'll be, I'll be squarely, dearly honest, man. And I'm going to say it. If that happens, I want Mike Tomlin fired by the end of the season. Wow. I don't care what they do. I want him fired. And I will not watch a Pittsburgh steal a game. I will not, bro. You got to stand for something. There's no reason. No, there's why do you put Kenny Pickett back? Kenny Pickett back there. Yeah. You're wrong. Yeah. Why? What? What? He's not the right shade. Right. Are you kidding me? I saw the same thing. I saw the same thing. I feel the same way. Um, that that shouldn't even be considered. I don't know if Mike Tomlin was behind it. I, I, it sounded like there was a special teams coach who kind of mentioned it, and then a player mentioned it. But no, he should not be back there. Should not be back there. You got enough players back there that can run the kickoffs. And I know the, you know, the kickoffs have kind of changed a little bit, but no, he shouldn't be back there. He shouldn't be back there. He's quarter, a quarterback. And you should not put uh, a quarterback uh, of his caliber back there to run anything. They're trying to make him to that, into that guy that played for New Orleans. No, don't do that. Don't do that. That guy can't He's play. Big enough. Can't yes. put a quarterback. <laughs> and that's why they put it. He wanted to stay on the team. Uh, another football note before we get to the draft and who the winner and the losers are. I had a chance to watch the uh, roast of Tom Brady. I don't know why he did that. They all, oh, if, you, if you didn't have a chance to watch that, they raked him across the coals with Cassell. They were saying things I didn't know about because they were saying how, yeah, uh, Tom Brady screwed uh, Bill Belichick. And he's like, know who else screwed their coach? Cassell. She screwed her BJJ coach. I was like, Oh, I mean, that, that was out the gate, bro. That was out the gate. I don't know. And Kevin Hart was like, you got to be a fool to stand up here and take this roasting. Why would you want to do this? But he was a sport about it. And uh, everybody was, hey, man, everybody, if you didn't get a chance to watch this, about three hours long, the only person I didn't like is Ben Affleck because he was just, you know, uh, you know, Tom Brady, uh, you know, that's all he did. No jokes or anything like that. But um, that was that was must see TV, and I, I, I have to I, I got a lot of respect for Tom Brady because he got raked across the coals and he sat there <laughs> picking like a man. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> I love roses, man. I do. I I agree with you. I don't understand why you submitted it. I remember the one I think I saw years ago. They were talking to the guy that does um, late night TV on ABC. Oh, they cut him up, man. They was like, "How are you still on television?" I mean, they. Snoop and this new one, they cut him so bad, man. I mean, I was on the floor laying down laughing so much, man. So when it's good, it's good. And you're right. It's just like, with, I don't want to see a lot of Tom Brady. Why would you, for what reason? You want to, you need attention for what? What's probably, going on? I mean, probably. Yeah, but, I don't understand. I, 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 don't, I don't get it, man. It's like, but I do think that's part of his, you know, I'm not going to say his problem. His thing right now is because what reason right now? Tom has got to be missing the adulation. Got to be missing it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be missing, man. You, you, you had it for what, 20 years? 
you got to be missing it. So what can I do to get out there and get me out there in front of people and people, man? Oh, and Kevin, Kevin Hart kept saying, I don't know why you're looking at me. I told you what I was going to do. <laughs> He's like, you know, Gasell's coming in as uh, Antonio Brown's plus one. I, I, they were they were raking when I say they were raking raking they were I mean they weren't holding back they even got on crap and Tom and Tom Brady got up like you know don't say that again the roast master Jeff Ross yeah. saying something about when he came to uh um you know craft and said you know I'm gonna be the best you know quarterback whatever the best pick you ever had can I give you a massage I guess the case is still pending <laughs> <laughs> you like a massage, <laughs> and he got, he had to get up. Like, no, don't say that again. <laughs> they thought that was a Will Smith moment. But anyway, mm. who is your winners and losers of the draft? The draft was last week, um, a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to take some time to kind of look at teams and and who they pick. One of the things people are are, are downing the Atlanta uh, Falcons for picking Penix. And I'm like, no, I think that's a good pick. He was the best player available at that particular time because you just don't know what Kirk Cousins is going to give you. And Kirk Cousins had the nerve to say, well, they didn't inform me. Dude, you ain't do nothing for the team at this particular point. Cash your check, you know, eat your expensive dinners, you know, your beef wellington, all that stuff. Shut up and come back and play. And if you can beat out this guy, then, you know, beat, beat him out. But I didn't feel like he had any kind of – um you know, right to say anything about who they draft and all this other stuff. Because if I'm part of the team, I'm like, I've seen this guy in the last five years. He's inconsistent. I don't know why they gave him all that money. Maybe the owner wanted to give him that money. I don't know. I think the Bears did a great job. I think there's a few teams that did, did a great job. But winners and losers, man. No, I'm gonna I'm 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 support you in the Bears, man. I'm gonna go all in a little bit. And I I think what makes it a, you know a, a dumb move to me. You could got Penix. Anyway, and not sign Kirk Cousins, bro. You did that 150, you guaranteed him you didn't need to do it. You didn't need to do it. It's not like Kirk Cousins is going to come in, win you a bunch of games. He's, he can't come and play to the end of the season. So you figure the first season is basically a toss up with him. Why not take Penix anyway? Because people were going to walk away from him based on his past injury history. You could have got him and, and basically kept that money to pay somebody else. You need defensive players. And so to me, that's where it's, you know, I like them taking them. I just don't. I don't think how they did it. It was like they. It's, it's almost like they didn't realize the draft was happening to the night of the draft. Right. It's like they didn't do any homework. They didn't pay attention. They didn't feel what was going on. Oh, we got a draft tonight. Oh wait, man, let's go. We don't finish this. <laughs> it just kind of seemed that way. I, I, I'm gonna tell you, man. Nobody kind of really talks about them too much. But the Lakers. I mean, I'm not the Lakers. The Raiders kind of. I, I didn't understand their 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 drafts per se. They draft, I mean, give was a very good tight end, but I'm looking at him like, I just think, you know, it's almost like the old Raiders. They, I remember they drafted a kicker, a punter, first, first round pick. I mean, remember that years ago? Yeah. They drafted a punter, the first round. They do some things in the first and second round, have you going like, yeah, I mean, so to me, and then the Buffalo Bills, I put a life with me. Why would you trade with a team that just whipped your ass a few months ago? Yeah. They got one, let them get one stop. I don't mean, understand it. To the Chiefs. I, I I didn't understand that one at all. See, I'm telling you right now, if you were to beat me a few months ago, and my phone is ringing, and it says, you know, Boomer's calling. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I mean, I don't care if it's one move, three moves. I don't care. You just don't. You don't want to give them that one the Super Bowls the past couple of years. Why are you aiding them to pick up any type of player? And that was that's I told people last week, get your get receivers. This this was I they don't talk about them, but they, almost every team picked up a receiver. Almost every and the team. thing is the Chiefs used that. They they basically got their sub with junior Tyree Gill. Think about it. <laughs> and you're gonna have to play them probably in the playoffs or something. You're gonna play them like, Are you kidding me? I don't understand it. I, I just so to me, I I mean not that was a bad, bad move, but Buffalo. It's just, if I look at them with the draft and prior to the draft, I don't understand what the hell they're doing. I really don't understand what the hell they're doing. I'm sorry, man. I ain't got to like you. If I'm paying you to do the service, just do only do your job. 
I, I don't care what you do. I don't care. I mean, long as you don't break the law, you're doing your job. I don't care. You ain't got to like me. I work with cats where we had to work on a train. Guess what? He worked this part. I worked this part. We meet. We go our separate ways. We ain't hugging out. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, bro. I don't, I don't understand it. With grown men, <laughs> thank you. You ain't get all this money. Oh, well, you know, he's the. Uh, uh. That's it. I, I, I'm gonna tell a quick story. Real, a, 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 a quick story. When I worked in radio years ago, I started out doing the midday, and they kind of moved me into being a program director. So with a the guy they left to be the general manager, him and I used to just bump heads, bang, 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 bang. So my boss is in Virginia. I'm working in South Carolina. He called me one day. He was pissed off. He said, "Man, Mark, he keeps calling down. They complain, bang, bang, bang. So I don't hear about it. I don't care what you gotta do. Take him out for lunch, breakfast, whatever. But y'all better start getting along. I don't care." That's what he said. That's what he had to say. Y'all, and guess what? His <laughs> boss gave him a call. Man, you would throw his brothers after that. <laughs> Serious, we gotta love each other. Just work to your job. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, we gotta trade him because he's what? You know, I, 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 and I'm not saying this because it's one of my favorite teams. Uh, but Pittsburgh, I think, did a real great job. They got some offensive linemen. They got another receiver. Um, they got some um, a linebacker and cornerback, defensive lineman. It seems like they're just trying to strengthen their team a little bit on both sides of the ball, uh, protecting um, Russell Wilson and any of the quarterbacks that are back there. Um, I, I really love what they did. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? It's like it. You're doing things that just don't don't make sense. You know you have needs, but you're not really getting the players that you um, that you really need. You could have just traded some of those picks for for another draft instead of grabbing some players that you probably not even going to put on the field. So what what are you doing? Uh, I also looked at um, Houston Texans. Uh, I think did a did a great job with the draft. I don't know who's on that brother's staff, but they're doing they're making some great picks and they're trying to get to the next level. They're grabbing um, um, cornerbacks. They're grabbing defensive linemen. They're grabbing tight ends. They're grabbing a running back. They're grabbing all these great players uh, from, from the college ranks that are strengthening that team. Do you notice, I don't know if you saw this, J.J. Watt is basically saying, all they got to do is call him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wants yeah. to come back. He, see, he sees it right. He saw it. Like, this is when we put the helmet on. I don't have to play because you know they might be <laughs> in the ring soon. He's like, yeah, well, they got, I'm ready to come back. No, you're not. Look, they don't want you, boss. They don't want you. But I cracked up when I saw that. You're right, Houston, man. That, that Texan team, and they're going to be set for a good while, bro. For a good young team, they're going to be set for a while. For a good while. Yeah, we already talked about the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, did, made some great picks. And um, they're on their way back to the Super Bowl again with wide receivers, tight ends, offensive tackles, offensive linemen, DBs. I mean, they have they got like three offensive linemen that they're like, okay, we're paying Mahomes a lot of money. We got we got to pay somebody to protect them. But uh, another team that I really like what they did, or, or I, I didn't really like what they did, was the Denver Broncos. They get Bo Nix trying to do uh, get another uh, uh, quarterback that the coach really likes. Um, they they get uh, they get probably one receiver from Utah. I think that was a good pick. But then they got uh, another running back from um, Notre Dame. Don't know if he's going to get on the field. Like I said, every team picked up a wide receiver, and and the Denver Broncos picked up two. But you let go a bunch of wide receivers who have been very seasoned right now that can help you. So, you know, Sean Payton, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how long he's going to be coaching at Denver. But um, he's trying to, you know, recreate what he did in New Orleans you're not going to be able to do that within the next five years. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's not going to be able to do that. No, I'm with you there. Man. I think Sean, I, it's, it's sad because Denver has a new ownership. They bought into the fact that his ego, I can do this, I can do that. And he's not that good of a head coach, honestly speaking. He had a good team. He had a good short run. But he's not. He's overrated. Yeah. So best. Last team I'm going to talk about is the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. And Harbaugh did a decent job in the draft, um, getting defensive linemen, cornerbacks, receivers. Um, he got three receivers um, he picked out from uh, Michigan, of course, uh, a linebacker from Michigan. Uh, so he picked up some of his players 
And so uh, that should be uh, pretty good. Uh, Brendan Rice, um, Jerry Rice's son. Nobody's talking about him. They're talking about Harrison, but they're not talking about Jerry Rice's son. I've seen him play at USC. He's, I, I'm not going to say he's going to be as good as his father, but that was a pretty damn good pick. Um, and then he got a receiver um, from um, uh, Georgia, uh, kind of like the receiver that uh, the, the New England Patriots used to get, you know, a possession receiver. And so yeah. uh, you can see what they're trying to do. Uh, Harbaugh is known for pounding ground, just like his brother. So you can see what they're trying to do with that offense, taking the ball out the quarterback's hand every every play, and let's let's uh, get down in the dirt and let's see who really wants to play football. So I really like what um, what Harbaugh has done at, with the Chargers. Um, I'll give you a last um, hot take if you have one. Other than that, if you don't have a hot take, let's go to your last second shot. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out piggyback before I throw a hot take out. I'm gonna piggyback what you said about Harbaugh. I'm gonna be curious to see how long that quarterback stays there. Long. I thought because he was long. I thought, I thought so too. Long. I thought so too. But I I don't think he's gonna make it two years there. I just don't see it long. I don't. I don't. He's not that type of quarterback. Just gonna be handing the ball off. And at some point, what they're paying him, I would not be surprised if he gets traded. But um, but my other hot take is, man, if you if you, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed this. That I was talking about earlier about the NFL Network. TNT has basically lost their rights to the NBA. If you all haven't heard it, Amazon has picked up the NBA. And NBC has stepped into my knowledge, not to play it on NBC, but on Peacock. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it now, NBA basketball is going to be streamed on Amazon and Peacock. And right now, they don't know what's going on. Charles Barkley, the Jet. Shaq and the rest of them. Charles Barkley, he's a free agent. And I'm going to tell you, man, don't get me wrong. I I, I I like them. Kenny Smith, sometimes I don't know what the hell he's saying. I'll be honest with you. He just got up there and start talking. He, he's, he's, he, Kenny, you're trying to be too intellectual, bro. Just talk about the game. Stop all the long-winded stuff. Just just, just tell them what we may not be seeing. But I got a funny feeling we've seen the death of those four together. Your thoughts? <clears throat> I don't want to sound like a hater. But I do not I, I stop watching them because, you know, when you when you get to halftime, <clears throat> you're looking for highlights from other games, stuff like that. So while Ernie's talking, you got Shaq and and, and <laughs> Bobby, all the time Bobby, Bobby, talking over. I'm like, who wants to hear that? It sounds so confusing. It sounds, you know, I guess people like that. I don't like it. So what I usually do is I turn on some music or I turn to something else because, you know. Y'all funny every now and then, you know, but nobody wants to hear you talk over Ernie. Ernie's got, supposed to be a straight guy. He's supposed to give highlights and statistics and all that and then get commentary from you guys. But when you got Shaq, oh, Chuck, I'm going to come over there and beat you, blah, 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 blah. Come on over here. They run into the, the big screen and all that other stuff. The antics to me, and I guess they got Emmys for it. People enjoy it. They, you know, they, they, you know, on Twitter and all that. I don't enjoy that. It's like, it's, it's it's over for me. So if they don't come back, they had a good run, and okay, good riddance. Because I don't want to see Charles Barkley mumble and and, and talk nonsense, you know, throughout games and, and when I'm streaming them, or whether it's Amazon or Peacock. I don't I don't enjoy it. Every now and then they'll say something funny you see on social media, like yeah, that was a good one. On, but they try to do that so much that yeah. it, it just gets like okay, I see what you're trying to do. Everything's not funny. You know, and of course, nobody's writing for them. So they're just doing it off the cuff. And they think it's, you know, hilarious. So, like I said, some people like it. I just got kind of wore thin of it. Even before the game, I won't watch it before the game. Halftime, I turn to something else. After the game over, I go to another. I go to CBS. There's a sports network on streaming I'll go to to get the highlights. Because I just want the new. I don't want. I can go to a comedy, you know, a channel to get comedy and all that other stuff. But I just don't. It, it just wore thin with me. It's interesting because um, when you come down to TV and radio, demographics are important. The younger demographics are more important because they tend to spend more impulsively when it comes down to cash. That's what people want. Um, another thing happened, I'm going to get to that in a second, come back to TNT, but CBS decided to take off Phil Simms, mm -hmm. Boomer Yeah, yep. They went a little younger. So to me, I, I, I agree with you with the NBA television. I mean, their show, it's run its course, man. It got to the point, they, they spend more time trying to find things that humor then really talk what's going on in the court. They don't bring any expertise like they used to. 
You know, Shaq just, when I play Shaq, we know when you play sports. You couldn't make foul <laughs> He's shots. He's the greatest center ever. ever? Yeah. yeah. We love you, Shaq. But let's just, can we just talk about what went on? What's going on now? Und- understandably so. I think what's going to happen, I predict, only person from that network is going to probably, maybe Ernie, maybe. Candace, Candace um, Parker, she's going to get snatched up. She'll probably go. The rest of them, hang on to bounce. Basketball season, as far as Kenny and Charles, I mean, college basketball. Yeah, college I don't think they're making a move. I don't think they move because you want you want a younger demographic. They know for the most part, you and I are going to turn in a watch. They already know. They're looking for the younger demographic that's going to spend the dollars, the commercials. Yeah. I mean, I look at the commercials sometimes. They, they the commercials they run on NBA Sports and they, that their show, their their cologne, their phones. We ain't buying. We're not buying that. We're past that say, bro. So they're not advertising towards you and I. I mean, for myself, they don't have the ARP commercial up there, which I never really want to be part of, but they're not putting them on those sports. So they're looking at younger demographics. And the thing is, Shaq, Charles, and Kenny, half of the younger demographics don't remember all playing basketball. They don't remember. They really don't. They yeah. don't care. Yeah, it's true. Last second shot. <clears throat> Whew, man, you know, it's a good time to really kind of follow sports. Like right now, the NBA has kind of opened some doors up and things are going well. But I want to toss something to you, man. I'm going to bring this to one black man talk. I try not to talk about one black man talk on the show. Anytime, but I saw a couple of videos. I Love saw it. a couple of videos, basically, where, where um, Tiger Woods, when he was younger, knew racism was out there, spoke of it, faced it, said how he wanted to do. He wanted to play in the masses because they don't like how they treat black people. And for the life of me, I don't understand how this man gets there and turn his black on his race. I don't understand. And to me, that's something we should talk about and talk about openly and bold. It makes no effing sense. It just doesn't. For, for this man to basically understood, to be raised by a man. Because Tiger Woods, if you're 14 and experience it, imagine what your father and grandfather experienced. And then they get to the point where you they help you succeed. Bill, excuse my language, Bill, you're a motherfucking ladder to succeed, and you get there and forget about it. You're a piece of shit. Mm. I want to say happy birthday to one of my favorite, favorite play, baseball players of all time, uh, Willie Mays, the Say Hey Kid, turns 93 on May 6th. So um, I remember him in cartoons. I remember him playing. As I remember going to Shea Stadium to watch a game in the 70s when he was coaching, wasn't playing anymore, but watching him and him tip his hat uh, to the crowd every time he came out. One of the best baseball players ever. And I think he was the godfather of Barry Bonds, another great player. So say hey, kid, 93, looking great. Peace. Enjoy. We'll see you next week. Later.